So what is this? Now, I love finding new programming environments, programming languages to try out. This one, I don't even know why I haven't come across it before. It's a .NET programming language, but unlike the Microsoft .NET languages, C Sharp, F Sharp, and uh, Visual Basic, it's got its own environment, and it's not one of those three languages. It's a version of Pascal. It's called Pascal abc.net. Let's have a look at the website. You can download it from this website here. Why haven't I heard of it? It turns out it's better known in Russia. It was developed in Russia and I believe also partly in Germany and it's used widely in schools and colleges for teaching uh, programming in Russia in a way that perhaps we'd be more likely to use Python or possibly Java. It's a great language for both teaching and for writing your own applications. Uh, this is its environment. You can even program visual applications. Let's do a new project, Windows Forms. Now, I think the Windows Forms designer is exclusively for the Windows version, but there is a Linux version you can use as well. Uh, if you want to do visual design that's cross-platform, you could try using Lazarus, which is a different Pascal product, Lazarus with free Pascal. But Lazarus does not use .NET, so that's what I'm looking at here. This is why we're using WinForms, just as we would if you, you were writing a .NET application in, um, in C Sharp. So you drop on a button, let's put something else. What else have we got? A label. And um, oh, let's just do that. So I double click the button and I want to put in a label one text equals hello and then I'm ready to compile it and off I go so I click the usual button up here oops I've got a mistake of course it's not C sharp in spite of being a .NET language so it uses colons equals instead of a single equals and uh, there we go and that's my visual application now I've done a, a slightly bigger project and let me load this up now uh, recent projects and that is this no this is a, a simple adventure game anybody who follows my channel will know by now that when I'm learning a new language or a new IDE I usually start with a little adventure game because it's a nice um, it's a nice example of something that tests out object orientation syntax and gives you a, a reasonably interesting program in a fairly small number of lines so here is my adventure game. It's got uh, this main uh, unit here, adv2.paz. I, I scroll down because if you want to try out this on your own, you can see the uh, code I've written. So it just creates a map array and I put in these room objects here in the init procedure. And then I've got N, S, W, E. Those are the uh, procedures to move north, south, west and east. A main loop which just uh, keeps on reading input really and uh, if it's uh, one of these characters then it calls the associated procedure until the input at the end is Q for quit and here's my the, the main code that runs when the program is loaded so if you want to just enter that to try it out um, do so I should explain the objects I've done a little bit of object oriented programming here, a short hierarchy. So again, this uh, will look familiar if you're a Pascal or if you're a Delphi programmer. So I've declared the constructor and the functions procedures up here. And then in the implementation section down here, I've put the executable code. Uh, I've got the uh, create constructor and it takes a name and a, a description, a s two strings so that each thing object, a thing in an adventure game could be the base object for everything from a treasure to a room. In this case, uh, it's just the base object for a room and it's got a get name and set name and get description and set description functions. Then in the room unit, I declare a room to be a class which descends from thing. So it inherits the name and description. It's got its own constructor here and it's got these uh, N, S, W and E um, methods to uh, to move the player around. The constructor just calls the inherited create and then uh, sets the uh, various variables. So that's it. I mean, I've 
been able to write that pretty quickly. Let me show you some of the features of the uh, environment here. So it's not as complicated, it's not as complete as Visual Studio. Nevertheless, it's got, um, let's have a think, let's go back to this unit here. If I wanted to, for example, rename something, it's got some refactoring, so uh, rename, and I'm going to rename pause, and look at it, you know, you can see it's used elsewhere, so as I rename pause, I'll call it position, and uh, okay, and you can see that's automatically been renamed wherever pause existed in my code previously, um, it's got IntelliSense, and it's got debugging, Let's put some, let's try it out in the debugger. So here we go, start it up. It shows in this output window down here, the code running. I can't enter code directly in that window, but it gets around that by putting a little uh, enter uh, form, little text entry box down below. So let's do go east. So it hits my breakpoint and I press F7 to continue debugging. So it goes up into the east procedure here. Now if I want to do some debugging, I've got uh, various uh, local variables and watch lists I could use down here. Or I can just hover, for example, over map and I can expand it and look inside the map there. So it's got a reasonable set of tools. So what's the disadvantage of this? It's such a useful system, completely free. It's a useful system for programming .NET using a different IDE, not Visual Studio, um, with visual design, debugging, intelli all these features I've been showing you, why are more people not using it? Well, as I said, it seems to be quite well known in Russia. The main problem is lack of English language documentation. And even if I look at the help system up here, so I want to look at the contents, and well, unfortunately, I don't speak a word of Russian, so this means literally nothing to me. That said, the if you know some Pascal, if you know Delphi, or if you're familiar with .NET, or you've just got broad experience of programming, it's pretty easy to get into, to work your way through this. As you can see, I mean, this is what I've written more or less from scratch, just working it out as I go along, and I don't speak any Russian whatsoever. If anybody watching this video does speak Russian and you want to give us some more information on this, or if you know of any more English language documentation, please post it in the comments. Um, if, like me, you are just a bit of a language geek and you love trying out new things, I think this is really, really interesting uh, to try this out. A, a Pascal implementation, a free implementation of Pascal for .NET, there is a commercial, nothing to do with this uh, product, there is a commercial Pascal for .NET called Oxygen, which is quite expensive. This one is completely free. So I've only been using it for about a week, but so far I've really enjoyed it. I've been really impressed. I'm a long-term Pascal user. Uh, it's really nice to have an alternative to C Sharp. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back with something completely different quite soon.